I'm Jonathan Scott and welcome to this short introduction to the instrument commonly known as the harmonium. I'm here with a few of the instruments from the collection of Pam and Phil Fluke and I'll be taking you through the instrument to show you how it was made, how it sounds and how it works. The need for the harmonium arose from people wanting an instrument which was like the pipe organ but had expressive capabilities and could go louder and quieter. Now, pipes on an organ can't do this, they go flatter and sharper as you change the wind pressure. So, people used free reeds, little brass tongs set in a matrix and they vibrate freely when air passes over them, just like this, performing a note which then comes out as this could have a wide dynamic range and wouldn't change with heat or humidity and wouldn't change with wind pressure. This idea was taken and the first examples we get are taken into an instrument like this, the Org Espressif, a quiet instrument with just one set of reeds and pumped by the feet. This simple idea was developed by several instrument makers over the next few years and it was the Parisian maker Alexander Francois Duban who in 1842 patented the name Harmonium and it was for an instrument just like this. The band's patent was for a keyboard instrument which used pressurised air from bellows pumped by two foot pedals to produce sound from free reeds, the same method of sound production found in the accordion and harmonica. The instrument had multiple stops, like an organ, and a divided keyboard so that the player could choose different pitches and timbres in the treble and bass of a single keyboard. The band's instrument proved to be extremely popular, and by the 1860s he ran a factory employing over 600 workers. Many people copied the band's idea, and because it was patent for the name Harmonium, they had to create basically what was a similar and very much the same instrument, but with many, many different names. We have Org de Salan, Org Melodium, Org Alexandre, all basically the same. However, it was another French maker who emerged as the greatest harmonium maker in the world, and that was Victor Mustel. Mustel founded his business manufacturing harmoniums in Paris in 1853 and was regarded as an artist rather than an instrument maker. His careful craftsmanship and attention to detail meant that he only produced around 15 instruments a year and between his first harmonium in 1853 and his death in 1890 only around 500 instruments had been made in total. Mustel's harmoniums won prizes at international exhibitions and the refinement of his instruments earned them the name of Art Harmonium. The invention of the Celeste in 1886 by Victor's son, August, ensured worldwide fame for the Mustel name. The Paris showroom was complete with a sumptuous recital hall and Mustel's instruments won praise from the greatest musicians of the day and could be found in the finest opera houses, concert halls, churches and music rooms around the world. This is a typical Mustel instrument in how it's laid out and how it sounds. I'm going to take you through a few of its unique sounds and also some of the amazing mechanical inventions that Mustel created. To make sound we need air. This is produced by pumping two foot pedals which push air from feeder bellows up through the instrument and into a reservoir which gives a constant and stable air supply. When a stop is drawn, valves open allowing the air into the reed chamber. And when keys are pressed, pallets open which allow the air to pass through the reeds. The best instruments have an expression stop which, when drawn, bypasses the reservoir and gives the player direct control of the wind to the reeds. This makes the feet almost as expressive as a violinist's bow. We can have crescendos, accents, and even vibrato. This is how the name Org Expressif came about because of the expressive sound of the instrument and why the stop is called expression. 
The sounds are controlled by stops over the keyboard, just like those of a pipe organ. The stops on the left are operated by the left hand part of the keyboard. The stops on the right are operated by the right hand part of the keyboard. All these harmonies have the basic four sounds. We have a flute sound, a 16 foot flute sound, an 8 foot reed sound which is at the back, and a 4 foot reed sound which is also at the back. We also have a grand jeu or full organ stop which draws all four ranks at once. And Mustel had a few other inventions he came up with. He placed two reeds at the same time, one sharp, one flat, which creates a beating sound. That's of voix celeste, the celestial voice, which is this. A beautiful sound. He also created one in the bass, which is a two foot pitch, very French sounding. In the treble, he also put a 32 foot rank baritone. Which means we can play a very high sound with the left hand and a very low sound with the right hand. So it's almost two keyboards laid down next to each other. To make the basic flute sound speak faster, it can be a little slow sometimes, percussion was added to the instrument. These are little piano hammers which hit the reeds and can make it speak much faster. An odd percussive effect was very good for fast, fast playing and very sort of quick sounds. Mustel wanted his instrument to be ultra expressive and so he developed double expression. This is controlled by these two knee flaps. And when they're unclipped, they restrict the wind flow to each half of the keyboard. And then we can control the wind separately. So for example, if I play a chord across the divide, if I want the bass to go louder, I open the left flap. If I want the treble to go louder, I open the treble. An ingenious invention which allows great expression and you can actually balance the two halves of the keyboard. He also added to this forte espressi, which is flaps at the back of the instrument over the back reeds, which have exactly the same effect. The air is then increased into the forte espressi flaps. So the same thing again. The flaps then open and close. There is also on this instrument a metaphone, which is on a lot of instruments a leather flap or several flaps over the reeds at the back. And this changes the timbre of the sound, almost changes the, the vowel sound. So when it's open, quite reedy. When it's closed, it softens the sound, just giving us a warmer, expressive sound at the back of the instrument. The full potential of these instruments is only realised with mastery of all the various aspects which need to be controlled at the same time. Taking a look inside, we can fully appreciate Mustel's inventive skill. The instrument opens up in hinged layers like a book. Once the lid and forte board are removed, we can see the stop rods. The stop board lifts to reveal the key mechanism and springs. The entire keyboard lifts up to show the pallets for the front reeds and the openings for air to pass through the back reeds. Next, we open the reed pan. This instrument has 430 brass reeds mounted in various ways and on different resonating chambers to give a variety of sound qualities. We can also see the valve board which allows air into each set of reeds through valves which open when a stop is drawn. When the valve board is removed we can see Mustel's ingenious double expression mechanism. A complex balance of mechanical and pneumatic devices which balance the air pressures within the expression chambers with the pressures supplied by the bellows, whilst also maintaining a balance with the atmospheric air pressure outside the instrument, all controlled by the two knee flaps. All these layers are cleverly housed within what appears to be a deceptively simple musical instrument. Hundreds of styles of harmoniums are made and instruments known as American organs, which used the suction pumping system, were made in their thousands. These instruments were generally much simpler and easier to manage, making them perfect for chapels or travelling musicians. They could even be used outside. Many of the world's greatest composers were inspired to write for these instruments and use them in their works. People like Sanson, Vido and Franck, as well as symphonically by people like Mahler, Liszt and Strauss. 
These were fell out of favour in the late 1920s and by the 1930s it had almost been replaced by things like the electric organ. Nowadays a few of them are being brought back to life and restored and their sound is being heard again. So I hope you've enjoyed looking around this collection and hearing what the harmonium is actually capable of. Yeah.